So finally, the last video of this experiment number two and experiment number three, which is separating the components of panacetin and identifying the component of panacetin, is this kind of short, brief little lesson on drug recalls. We are talking about the pharmaceutical industry, so why not bring in a little bit of pharmaceutical knowledge at the same time? So if a drug is sold to the public and it does not match the label information, so let's say I go to the pharmacy and I pick up some aspirin and I bring it home and I take it. And let's say that I do some tests on that aspirin tablet. And the aspirin tablet says there's 325 milligrams of aspirin that are present. Then, hopefully, when I do my test, it's going to be close to 325. And if it's not, and if it's way above or way below, then that company is liable for any of those damages that might happen to me as a consumer or lying to me on the label of the bottle. So the product would be recalled. And there's three different t types of classifications of recalled drugs. The first one is the most severe, class one. A class one recall basically means a company has sold you a drug and that drug is making people die because of contamination or because there's too much or because there's not enough of the active component. Class two are reversible health effects, meaning that when you're taking them, you're experiencing some damage. You're re experiencing some type of side effect. But when you stop it, everything goes back to normal and your health recuperates just like it was before you were taking the medication. And then class three, there are no health effects associated with that. They're recalled for other reasons. And this is typically because somebody has found something in one little bottle that didn't quite match and they have to recall everything everything because there was a little piece of hair inside of the bottle. I mean, that's kind of what those recalls are. A drug withdrawal is different than a recall. A withdrawal is a minor violation. There's no legal action with FDA at all. So they have withdrawn the drug from the market over something small that's not quite right, but the FDA did not really step in and it didn't really tell the company that this is the best plan of action. I also want to keep you in mind that FDA cannot shut down a company. They are a legal body. They are a government agency. But if a drug manufacturer is producing a pill that is getting sent out to consumers, the FDA cannot shut down a company and tell them that they can no longer be in business. That is not the role or the regulation of the FDA. They are looking at the products that they make, not the company as a whole. What they can do is that they can fine them millions of dollars and try to put them out of business and make them go bankrupt, but they can't force them to shut their doors. And that's kind of scary when you think about it. If you look at drug recall history, quite a few things are out there on the market since all the way back from 1971 and even before that. 1971, we see a drug called DES. That's estrogen for pregnancy complication. It gave birth defects to babies. It was on the market for 31 years in total before the FDA finally stepped in and said enough is enough. This drug is not safe. Imagine, 31 years. 1985, quaaludes, sedatives, which are seizures and death. 23 years. That's now classified as a Schedule One drug. Another drug. In 2010, Darvacet, a pain reliever, toxicity to the heart, was on the market for 55 years before the FDA decided to pull it from the market due to the health concerns and side effects that were associated with the drug. 55 years, your trusted doctors and nurses helped prescribe this medication to you before your government finally decided to step in and say, you know, we're seeing reports and it doesn't look too good, so maybe you need to stop taking this type of medication. 2009, Accutane. If you have ever went to a dermatologist due to acne um, or uh, any type of major breakout that you've had, Accutane was prescribed um, 
uh, very commonly to teenagers. Uh, used to treat acne, but the problem is that there were birth defects and suicide rates were extremely high in teenagers who took Accutane. Now, was that due to maybe bullying in school over the severe acne that they had on their face? Uh, did they have a very good social life uh, while they were in school? Or was it really the drug? That's the problem that people really didn't know at that particular moment in time. But now Accutane has been pulled from the market after 27 years. Uh, this was so bad that they made you do blood work before you were prescribed Accutane, and they also made you continue to do blood work while you were on the drug. So a more complete list can be found at the bottom. If you just visit the website, wikipedia.org, uh, the link at the very bottom of the uh, PowerPoint slide, that will direct you to a major link that lists tons of medications that have been recalled. So the moral of the story here is don't really trust your doctors that much and don't trust your government like your FDA uh, regulators uh, because as you can see, uh, they might need to take a little bit time before they make a decision on whether a drug is good or not. Now, before I switch slides, I wanna go back to this Quaalude 1985 sedative after 23 years on the market. Now, no longer is it actually prescribed, and they have classified it as a Schedule One drug. But you know, back in the day, this is what an advertisement would look for Quaaludes. So here you can see Quaalude 300, right? A good morning after a sleep through night, and the daddy probably took some quaaludes the night before, and he's enjoying a breakfast with his family in the morning. And they all look very happy, and the home life looks very good. And when daddy's happy, everybody's happy, right? So this is what they were doing as far as advertisement goes for what we would now classify as a Schedule One drug. Kind of scary, isn't it? Uh, Darwin lifts the burden of pain, a non-narcotic analgesic with the potency of codeine. Uh, pretty powerful stuff. A little old lady's got a headache. Oh no, look, and then I'm going to take the Darwin and then I'll be okay. Uh, here's a, a cartoon comic of the pharmacy and it says it's a real miracle drug. It hasn't been recalled once by the FDA in 20 years on the market. Well, as you can see back here on the list, that doesn't really mean anything now. And now you can kind of get that picture. Here's Big Pharma Corps standing up at a podium, holding up a pill bottle. And it says, we decided to recall our new drug because a common side effect is lawsuit. And the history. 1997, the FDA had the FDA Modernization Act. It was a, a, a moment in time where they could maybe get with the program and clean up their act a little bit after all of these recalls began to happen. It was signed into law in 1997 by President Bill Clinton. It streamlined the FDA to meet standards, and it lowered the regulatory obligations of pharmaceutical companies, and it allowed off-label uses. So basically what happened during this presidency uh, and during these eight years uh, is that in 1997, the FDA could lower their standards on drug approval, meaning that pharmaceutical companies could actually manufacture medications and they could give it to the FDA with limited studies and data to back it up. And the FDA would not require any more than that. And the FDA would give the check off and it would allow these drugs to get processed and approved. It also would allow these drugs to be approved for off-label uses. So for instance, if Merck Pharmaceutical made a drug and that drug was supposed to be given to people with heart problems and they saw that once it was delivered, it made people's um, nosebleeds go away, then it could be prescribed for what it was not intended for. That was up to the discretion of the doctor. The whole reason that this happened is because we wanted to get medications, new medications, into the market. And by doing so, by re regulating and deregulating the approval process, 
these drugs were able to get into the market much quicker, which is a drawback because we do not have the data and studies now that really allow us to feel comfortable giving those drugs out on the market to the consumer. 2015, the Century Cures Act began to get implemented and passed. It was signed by President Obama in 2016. It allowed faster approval of drugs. So it basically took what happened in 1997 and it allowed the pharmaceutical companies to basically process medications even quicker and get them to the FDA even faster and allow the FDA to give them a check mark instead of an X. 45 drugs were approved. That was double the amount from the previous year. So imagine that kind of scenario. You have a government regulatory agency, and as we can see, they didn't do a very good job in the first place regulating and picking out what was good and what was bad, and we are now giving them the power to make faster decisions and more decisions, and we have doubled the amount of drugs that are getting approved onto the market. Again, the rationale was faster approval. It was cheaper for companies to get the drugs approved because they're already spending billions of dollars. I said billion with a B. Billions of dollars in money just to get the drug approved with the FDA. And that is why they charge $400 a pill in some cases for some of these drugs that they have. So they thought if they could lower the regulations, speed everything up, if the FDA did their job kind of well, then this would lower the cost of the drug and the drug and the pills would not cost as much. Uh, reviews can be done by third parties and then report it to the FDA, meaning that the pharmaceutical companies could go out, hire other companies to do the testing, allow them to assemble the data, and then all of that data goes to the FDA for processing. Uh, here's a chart on the number of recalls in the United States. So 2004, 2005, 2006, keep in mind here we're looking at 1997, which is not on the chart, but more recently 2016. And if we look at 2013, we see a huge spike in the number of total recalls in the United States. And then all the other colored ones are the class one, class two, or class three recalls that we talked about in a previous slide uh, a couple of minutes ago. So we're already looking at a very high number of recalls in 2013, and now we're lowering the regulations and allowing the FDA to approve medications even more, or even quicker now. So what's gonna to happen to the recalls? Are they gonna go down or are they gonna go up? 2013, total recall products, all FDA, not just drugs, but everything in Food and Drug Administration is what they oversee, 8,000. 2014, 8,000, pretty flat line. 2015, the year that the policy kind of went into place and was getting created, 9,178. We see a huge jump by 1,000 products. 2016, after the law was implemented, we see all FDA, not just drugs, 8,305, still higher than the 2013, 2014 years. And all of that data comes from the FDA enforcement stats. So you're more than welcome to go through, look at current years to see how those total recalled products are doing now, but those were the current numbers at this time. All right, so that kind of stops this whole scenario or this whole package of experiment two and experiment three videos. These are quite, these are going to be much longer. And the reason is because we're talking about two labs at one time and not just one. So with that said, good luck in the lab. Hope that your percent errors are much lower. Hopefully that your melting points will be on par of what they should be. And you'll walk away with a 100. So good job for you. A on your lab.